Okay. How was your day? Oh, my only one, so I think that's an achievement. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> what a great way to start. Um, so let me get the comment spreadsheet separated from YouTube so that way I can still see YouTube while responding to the comments. Uh, because this is going to be a uh, spreadsheet stream, which um, if you guys don't know, that's when all your questions start live. I'm about to finish Control Mockingbird. Ooh, what do you think? I love that one. Um, so yeah. Anyways, your show's always going to be starts on and boost all. Thank you. I have to move YouTube back a little, so I'm getting a little bit too close and personal for you guys, and I feel a little guilty. I'll also move the camera closer to Tip Top's camera, uh, so that way I'm still looking directly at you, even though my computer's more to the side. Look at this achievement. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then, uh, let me look at the rest of the comments. I know this doesn't read with me, but I think I'm going to read a little right now. Do it! Um, you're reading Sister Crows, I'm so proud of you. Uh, hi, Sleeping Writer. Which knows me all. Oh, hi, Cora Kerr. Uh, hi, Read with Sarah Kay. Um, we love saying hello to people. You gotta greet everyone. I love your bookshelves. Thank you. Um, I say you gotta greet everyone, but I do stop greeting people after like a few minutes in. Shoveling get through and rising is it worth it? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. It's really 50 50. Hi, uh, Arlie Reads Books. Uh, we feel sorry since on Thursday. Nice. I finished my ethics essay. Ooh, I took ethics for one week. Then I switched to a different course because I didn't like my professor. Um, hi, Frost Galaxy. Have you read Little Women? No, but I want to. I'm uh, struggling. Oh, wait, I am too bad. Whoops. Look at me on top of things. I got a shadow bone since a crow say. Nice. Hi, Cassie Myers. Girls have spin the dawn. I'm reading me on the flame. Oh my gosh, yes. That's just like two amazing things at once. That's incredible. Um, favorite book quote, ooh, my favorite book quote is probably, um, I mean, I love No Mourners, No Funerals, because it's a classic, you know, it just, it works, um, but We Hunt the Flame, The Light and the Darkness, The Good This World Deserves is another favorite, that's from We Hunt the Flame, if you couldn't tell from the words that was in the quote, um, so yeah. I forgot I don't have to search for every question. They're all going to be logged. Uh, sappy romance reps for Valentine's Day. Um, I just put a video up on it, but The Kiss Quotient, Red, White, Royal Blue, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating, also by the same author, The Unhoneymooners, The Wedding Date, uh, Dead Life, Chloe Brown, The Dating Plan. Even though it doesn't come out to everyone until next month, you can get it from Book of the Month right now. Uh, Honey Girl, which I haven't read yet, but I really want to. Um, and yeah, those are some, all those are adult romance, by the way. Uh, so yeah, favorite book series. I think my favorite's probably, um, oh wait, I forgot, I can press the button and highlight them. Look at that, my favorite book series. Uh, this is on TikTok, sorry, YouTube. Uh, my favorite book series is probably Sits of Crows or We Hunt the Flame or The Wrath and the Dawn. Um, those are all my favorites. I love too many. Um, have you read Little Women? I have not, but it's on the TBR. How's your Valentine's Day so far? Once again, I only cried once today, so I think that's an achievement. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can. Um, happy Valentine's, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, who's your favorite Harry Potter character? Luna or Hermione? Um, one of the two. Don't ask which one, because I don't know. Um, and yeah, I love them both. I also love Remus. I also love Tonks. I love a lot of them. Uh, rest for nonfiction that reads like fiction. I've only read uh, Mountains Beyond Mountains. I actually don't read a lot of nonfiction. I feel a little ashamed, so I honestly don't really know that much. I'm so sorry. I tried last time reading Maple Five. Yeah, fun. How many books do you have? I forget. I can use the question feature and make that pop up. I have 1,846 books currently. Um, but, you know, that number is always changing. What's your favorite Percy Jackson character? Um, my favorite Percy Jackson character is probably Nico. Probably. Um, maybe. I don't know. All of it changes all the time. Uh, so yeah. Where'd you get your card again? Let's find out. Because I forget. <laughs> um, my card again is from... It's from Sheehan. So yeah, not the best company to support, but unfortunately, when I don't buy clothes, have money for clothes often, that's what I have to buy from. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, and ooh, so today I have mail. 
we're, we're, guys, look at us being professional. Uh, so I have a PO box, if you guys don't know. And uh, I've been fighting with my post office lately because my key doesn't work. Uh, I have to see earrings. Oh, yay. That's fun. I love them. They're, they're like, I like playing with them. I'm a cat, basically. Uh, but so I uh, have a PO box. It's in the link of my bio. I have it written out there. But um, yeah, so if you ever want to send me stuff, I will chat there. I've been fighting with the post office for a while, though, because uh, this is an unusually calm for Q&A stream. It's, this is just the start. We've only been on for eight minutes. Give it some time. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, so um, I've been fighting with them because the key didn't work. Also, I've learned I have a fear of the post office. Don't know how that happened, but I panic every time I go in the building. That said, I wanted to see what was in the post office. I haven't been there in like a couple months because anxiety. Uh, anyways, so we got stuff. One, I did miss one package and I feel extremely guilty um literally it's eating me up inside um but i'm trying not to think about that too much i have no idea who sent it so i don't know if it was a publisher who sent it to me or someone else but i did miss one package um and actually so fun fact i wasn't even the one who got all this i had to send my dad because i'm still too scared to go to the post office um so yeah and then next up i got this amazing letter um from anya uh, so actually, Anya sent me some books from my wish list uh, a while ago, so I think uh, this letter was probably sent before that, but it was so sweet. So uh, Anya's probably not here right now, but if she is, thank you. This like, oh my god, this, this letter was so sweet and so nice. Um, but yeah, that was one one thing here. Um, so let me go. Then I got this. This. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't have my address on it. Okay, never mind. You guys can see that. Uh, which had this stuff on the inside. Um, so, look at these. Okay, so these are bookmarks inspired by characters. And this is from at Imagine Louisa Art. So, thank you, Imagine Louisa Art. Um, oh my gosh, there's a note. I didn't even see the note. Um, oh, this is so nice. Uh, so Louisa designed and produced these bookmarks uh, herself. Hope you enjoy them. Um, oh my gosh, that was so nice. Uh, and then her TikTok is at Louisa White. Uh, so at Louisa White. Uh, is the one who creates these, a small business over on Etsy that she has. And so we'll actually look through. So these are all different characters. Um, so we have Aelin Galathinius. Um, we have Winter from the Lunar Chronicles. We have Cress from the, I love the Lunar Chronicles so much. So this is just, I don't have enough Lunar Chronicles stuff. Starlet, um, love that. Hi Terrell, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, Jude Duart, yes, cool prince, we stand. Um, ooh, Aiden from uh, Renegades, which I have not read yet, but I really want to. Um, Nightmare or Nova from Renegades. I, this is my sign to read Renegades. Uh, Cinder, I love Cinder. Um, I just love all those characters. Ooh, I, this is Isla from Isla and the Happily Ever After. Uh, Lola from Lola and the Boy Next Door. And then Anna from Anna and the French Kiss. These are stunning. The art on them is beautiful and they're just so cute. So uh, Louisa just, I don't think Louisa is here, but if she is, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna go wrap those up. Uh, and that note was really sweet. And then um, we have some more stuff. So this is a package from Andrea um, and this, is wait i forgot i can show you the address on these because this is the address that you guys know this is my p.o box address i don't have to worry uh but this is actually a book andrea wrote she messaged me about this so that's how i knew about this one but it's called mask a four region story um so let's see emily thought magic only existed in the book she read as a child when a handsome stranger enlists her help to uncover who tried to kill the princess of another world she learns those books were more than just stories 
she discovers the four regions, a realm where magical creatures fled to escape the human persecution. Uh, it is there that Emily finds power, passion, and friendship she had always craved. Uh, so it features the determined demon who guides her, the irresistible vampire who entices her, the excitable uh, demoness who supports her, and the quiet elf who understands her. Now Emily must unmask a murderer while wearing a mask herself, resisting the growing temptation that to ruin her newfound family. That sounds fun. And it's just, it's just so cute. So thank you, Andrea, for sending this to me. I cannot wait to read it. I'm also keeping everything in the packages so I can know who sends me what until I thank everyone properly. Um, because that's the real, the real challenge. Uh, communication. Um, this, so this was actually from um, Macmillan, uh, which is... I don't, I don't know why it was sent there, but the, this, I think this is the pre-order incentive for all the tides of fate. Uh, so this wasn't really, I, I, I got this, I submitted it. So I just don't know why I went to my PO box instead of my normal address. I usually put in my normal address for those. But that's cool, it's art for all the tides of fate. Uh, so we stand. Um, which one of these popular adult romances book would you want to read by or unhaul the romance book club? Uh, the Bromance Book Club, Get a Life, Chloe Brown, or Well Met. Oh, okay. So I haven't read the Bromance Book Club yet. So I guess I have to vote on haul for that one just because I haven't read it. Uh, then read, buy, or unhaul. Um, so I guess, um, ooh, I guess read, well met, buy, get a life, Chloe Brown, unhaul the Bromance Book Club. I feel bad because I've heard nothing but good things about the Bromance Book Club, but that's just, ooh, that's it's the only one I haven't read. Uh, it's been hard for me to pick a book pick a book that I'm interested in. I really like reading, but I can't pick a book that interests me. What should I do? So what I usually do in that situation is I will let's see what movies or shows I'm like really interested in. And you can pick from there. Like so if you like a lot of superhero movies, maybe try to pick a book that has a lot of those influences. I actually have a video coming out soon, which is your favorite Marvel Avenger as a book. Um that should be coming out tomorrow, maybe? Who knows? Um so that's one thing you can do. Um, I would also suggest hmm, rereading old favorites is another good one. You just want to get yourself in the mood to read, and that can really help. So those are my best advice for that situation. I just reorganized my bookshelf in the second time this week. Nice. Oh, I'm jealous. I want to reorganize my shelves, but I'm waiting until we get the new ones, and it's hurting me inside. My dad was at Home Depot today, and he was almost going to buy the wood, but we haven't finished the measurements yet, so we shouldn't have bought the wood because we have to finish that. Uh, so I'm hoping to put up the new bookshelves in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the doll. Welcome to the Thank you. I need to post more on YouTube. I feel a little ashamed. Um... <laughs> I really do. Um, but yeah, okay. Oh, we got one more mail thing. Um, oh, two more. Okay, so this one is actually from Entangled Teen Publishing. And I feel so bad because I did not see it until now. Otherwise, I would have posted about it earlier. So I'm going to have to post about it in a video. Um, so I already looked at it, but that's why everything's open. It is A Curse of Roses, which is a sapphic fantasy. Um, I am so excited. I heard great things about this book. It came out in December, so I'm guessing they probably sent this to me about that around then, and I didn't have access to my PO box, and I feel so bad because uh, I love to boost up Entangled stuff. Um, so yeah, so this is A Curse of Roses, and they also um, sent me uh author's note where is it oh it's sticky oh no it's sticking oh no uh but they also sent a note from the author which was so sweet um and yeah that's just i'm so excited for this book uh i'm also personally just very excited for covet yeah that was all that was in there okay done covet which is the third crave book is coming out soon and i cannot wait um and then the final item so this one actually uh, was kind of funny. Um, so I read the note, uh, which was a really nice note. Uh, so it's uh, Geraldine Saku, Saku. Um, I'm trying to make sure I pronounce her name right. Uh, but uh, so she wants to send me her very first YA paranormal romance novel. I think there was an issue. I looked up uh, her romance. Uh, I think actually Amazon told me what book it's supposed to be. So the book, oh, why isn't it not there? Why is it not there? It's, where is it? Okay, I left it downstairs probably when I was doing my research to figure out if this was the book. Um, I think it's called Her Dirty Blood is the name of the book. But um, I'll show you the book that I was sent. Uh, and I was a little confused when I first saw it, so I didn't know what the name of her book was. Uh, 
this is this is the book that I was sent. Um, I think Amazon just put the wrong book in the bag. This is not a YA paranormal romance novel. I actually translated all of this. This is an autobiography, autobiography about a 45 year old comedian. Um, so I think Amazon sent me the wrong book, but I found it kind of funny. Are we mirrored? I don't think we're mirrored. Yeah, we're not mirrored on uh, TikTok. But um, I found that kind of funny that they sent me this book and it's all, oh, whoops. Oh yeah, so here's the information. So it's supposed to be her dirty blood. Uh, and I looked up that book and that is not this book. Uh, are you sure it looks like it could be like paranormal? Uh, no, I looked, I translated everything. So this is actually all in Hebrew, um, which is really neat. Uh, I don't have any books in Hebrew, but this is actually an autobiography about a 45 year old comedian. Uh, is it in Russian? Is it, I looked it up. It's apparently all in Hebrew. Uh, and the entire book is in Hebrew, which I think is really cool. But, um, it is not a YA paranormal. <laughs> That was quite a surprise when I saw this. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Oh, what's your current read? So I am currently reading, um, what am I cur currently reading four things, but um, I forget the cameras here. Uh, currently reading four things. Two of them are my main focus though. So I'm reading, uh, um, why am I blanking on the title? It's Eva Lee's next book. It comes out on the 23rd of February. It's uh, Waiting for a Stot Like You. I'm about halfway through that. I'm also reading Down Comes the Night, which comes out next month um, on the 2nd, I believe, of March. Uh, and that's by Allison Saft. And that is a YA paranormal, not paranormal, YA gothic fantasy with a bi main character, which made me really excited. And uh, yeah, so I'm reading those right now. And I'm also hoping to be picking up The Soulmate Equation, which I have over here. Um which was so nice uh the publisher sent me this so i'm very excited to be reading this as well um but that's all i'm currently reading at the moment uh are you planning to read julia twins bridgerton series through the hype of the netflix adaptation yes so i actually read that series last i read it january 2020 because i heard it was becoming a netflix show and you know i had to be a hipster and feel like i read it before it was cool um, it was really all for the superiority complex. So I read it then and I really loved it, even though uh, I have an issue with the first one, um, which I've talked about a bit. I have a video on it uh, on TikTok, but basically the first book is, I hated it uh, just because of how they handled um, that scene towards the end. I'm trying not to give spoilers here, uh, but look, I've given spoilers about this before, but uh, I did not like that at all. And it took what would have been probably a five-star book for me and brought it down to one star. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that. But I love the rest of the Bridgerton series. And I did actually recently do a reread. Um, this is, I don't know how to close this. I recently did a reread um, of, the Bridgerton, of the second Bridgerton book. And I'm probably gonna keep rereading them as the series uh, continues to be posted. Uh, on Netflix, oh, those are words. Uh, how can you organize your shelves? Any ideas? Ooh, okay. Best organization methods. Um, is that a question on the questions thing? Because uh, then I, ah, uh, there we go. Um, so uh, I say my favorite way of organizing is by height, first and foremost. You wanna have it organized by height. Then within heights, I organize, well, actually no, I organize by genre, first and foremost. Then I go in by height. So I have all my tall books on one shelf, My average hardcovers on the other shelf, my paperbacks on the other shelf, and then organized paperbacks by height too, because there's no standardized paperback in the US and that's so frustrating. Um, so that's how I, that's my preferred organization method. Um, and then within by, so I'll go by height, then I'll go, no, it'll go by genre, then I'll go by height. Then within that, um, I'll go in and I'll try to keep uh, books I've read go to the top and books I haven't read go to the bottom. And then um, I also try to keep series and authors together. Uh, well, obviously you're gonna keep series together, but uh, authors as well, because I feel bad separating authors work. Um, oh, do you think color organization is a good way? Yes and no. I, okay, I mean, my shelf behind me is a rainbow. My contemporary shelf is a rainbow, uh, but I do have other shelves that aren't a rainbow because to be honest, 
It's really annoying. Uh, I love it for Instagram. It looks so pretty, so aesthetic. And you know what? Sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I see this beautiful rainbow shelf, it is so nice. I love looking at my beautiful rainbow shelf and I'm just like, look at that. That's so aesthetically pleasing. That said, when I'm doing live streams or when I'm filming videos and I need to think of a book, uh, so a lot of times people will ask, like, do you have any YA fantasy reps? Or people, or I'll be doing a video and I'll be doing like my TikTok sounds as buffs videos. And a lot of them are um, like, they'll be like a specific vibe. Like the sound definitely works well with fantasy books uh, and like enemies to lovers. So it's good to have it organized by genre because when I'm struggling to think of something to fit that recommendation, I will look at my shelf and be like, oh, let's go to the fantasy section. Let's, I sometimes do like sub genre too. And I'll be like, ah, oh, here's some enemies to lovers ones. And I'll pull from there. And that really helps. I, I, when I organize by genre, I also kind of sub organize just by vibe. Um, and it's just, just by vibe. Uh, that's really the main way of organizing is by vibe. Um, so that helps though when I'm doing these recommendation stuff. Uh, so when people say, hey, what's a book to read if you like Sits of Crows? I can be like, ah, well, Sits of Crows matches the vibe of this book uh, into the critical place and they're right next to each other. I actually have never put them next to each other, but I would, I would do that if, um, if they were organized by genre. Uh, but they're not, they're in color and it's frustrating. I also can never find books if I need, if I know I need a book. So for example, I was filming a video, um, it, my Marvel video, and I needed the book to buy the stars. And I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. And I remembered the color of the book. I knew it was like a purple. It was a dark purple and black. And so I was like, okay, let's look for dark purples. Let's look for blacks. Let's look in that area. And I could not find it. They're so hard to find. Um, so that's, yeah, color is not great. It's very pretty, but I'm looking forward to when I have the new shelves up and I'm going to be getting rid of, well, I'm going to be at least moving most of the books I use for videos. Um, the ones I use for videos, the ones I'll reference a lot in live streams, those will not be organized in color anymore. Those will be by genre. Um, we're going to switch up this whole organization method. This shelf behind me uh, will no longer be my main shelf. My main shelf will be the one over here because that's the shelf that when I'm sitting in my bed, I'll be staring at most of the time. Um, whereas the shelf behind me is kind of tucked in. So you don't really see it like from the door. You don't see it really from anywhere. So, um, except for in the videos. So that's why I kind of, I don't need to keep my favorite books there anymore. Like I put the, currently they're the genres I read the most, but I'm, that was only because it was my prettiest shelf. Um, and I thought it's the ones they deserved. Uh, so yeah, um, that is roughly my organization plan. So let me go through there. When will you read Crescent City? Danny, for you, never. Um, this is how I get Danny angry. Uh, can we be book friends? Hell yeah. Um, top five book spouses since I'm not an option. Grace, you're my number one spouse. Um, if you guys, can you guys see the Q and A? That, that's, that's my friend Grace. We love her. Uh, she's the best. Uh, she's on TikTok for everyone on YouTube, but we stand. Top five book spouses since Grace is not an option. Well, so this answer would have been different when I was in high school because when I was in high school and I was reading YA, I was the same age of the characters, but I'm an adult now and I mostly read YA. So I, just none of, I, so before people yell at me for not including any YA characters, I'm in my twenties. Um, I'm not picking any YA characters. That's my disclaimer that I always say before this. Uh, that said, uh, characters I would pick as my book spouses. Uh, Will Harrendale from Chain of Gold. Um, like, Dale's energy. Sorry. Um, and then, uh, let's see, who else? <laughs> That's is my whole list. It's just that. Um, looking at my shelves. See, like, there's the dark line. There's no age issues there. He's, like, immortal. But he's super toxic but he's super hot, but he hurts animals. I didn't forget about that anymore, but he can get it. Um, anyways, <laughs> Castile from, from Blood and Ash and Reese from Avatar, all of those are like 
people in real life, we probably wouldn't vibe, but like in romance, they're swoon worthy. Um, oh God, I don't even know anymore. Um, let's think. See, I would think, like, what about all the romance novels I read? Colin Bridgerton. Colin Bridgerton deserves the world. Oh, I love him. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Not the Dark Lane. Yes, the Dark Lane. We love the conflicting opinions on the Dark Lane. Um, we stand. Did Tip Top take our jobs? Oh, did it? Oh, no. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, when are you going to read Carval? One day. Um, eventually, hopefully. I want to you to this game. I think of Alex. No. Oh my gosh. Uh, do you know, have any ideas? I never have any ideas. Um, okay. So wait, rest from the vill villain's point of view. So I know Vicious by the E. Schwab has those vibes. I haven't read it myself, but it's got those vibes. Um, what's a book from the villain's point of view? Um... I'm trying to think of some. I feel like we don't get enough. See, with Wicked Saints, we kind of get, like, the villain point of view later on. Not in the first book, in the second book. Um, and then hopefully in the third book. Um, the Beautiful, you have chapters from the villain's point of view, which is fun. Um, but it's not, like, all from the villain's point of view. And, yeah, those are all I can think of right now. Because I clearly need to read more. The Unleashed, ooh, I need to read that. But yes, that would apply. Renegades is totally that. Ooh, more reason to read Renegades. Uh, I mean, this helps answer uh, questions. Uh, we're locked in. Yeah. Have you read The Maze Runner? Um, I have not. Um, but it's on my TBR. Um, let's head over to YouTube and get some. Can you please explain the difference between historical fiction and historical romance? Yeah, of course. So historical fiction actually can cover... So I think it's actually easier to explain historical romance. Historical romance uh, are both that take place at any point in history, but that deal focusly on the, ro the romance between two characters. There is a plot, but it isn't really that big of a deal. Uh, sometimes there really isn't a plot. It's just about the characters. Um, so that, whereas historical fiction, uh, there can be no romance in historical fiction. Also, historical romance will usually get a little bit spicier, historical fiction. You don't have to worry about any spice. Um, some of them you do, though, but some of them you don't. You know, it's it really depends on the book. Um, so that's the main difference. The historical fiction does not center around the romance of two characters. There can be a romance, but that is not the full attention. The attention is on whatever the plot is. Historical romance, the full attention is on the romance between two main characters, or more, um, where instead of on an actual overarching plot. Um, which TV shows from your childhood do you think have aged terribly? And which ones do you think have aged very well? Ooh, that's a good question. So ones that have aged well, obviously, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, iconic. Um, one that applies to both, Buffy. I love Buffy so much, but I want to make a video on this and I still might, but I'm sure you guys have heard the news about Joss Whedon. To be honest, this isn't news. Um, so if you guys don't know, Joss Whedon is the creator of Buffy. He's also created a lot of other shows. He also directed The Avengers. Uh, and uh, he's the one who came in for Justice League, which is why we now have the, the Zack Snyder cut, because uh, Joss Whedon, what Zack uh, Snyder had to leave the project, and Joss Whedon was brought on uh, and um, changed everything and made it worse. Um, Joss Whedon has made a lot of great things. Buffy, Firefly, Dollhouse, Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog, The First Avengers, uh, but Joss Whedon is a disaster. Uh, Joss Whedon is a horrible human being. Um, so Joss Whedon was praised with Buffy for creating, Buffy uh, aired, if you guys, I hope you guys know Buffy. Oh God, you guys are young. Like, even I was kind of young for Buffy. You guys are really young. Like, Buffy started airing before I was born. I can't imagine for you guys. Okay. Uh, so, Buffy uh, was a show that started in 1997. Now, I think the first episode aired in 97. Uh, so, it started in 1997, um, based off of a movie that aired in 1992. Um, so, Buffy is a TV show following... Buffy, uh, Buffy Summers, who is the slayer, the chosen one to beat back the forces of darkness and evil, uh, 
we stand. She's also a high school cheerleader and like, you know, the cliche cheerleader type character you would think, except she also like fights vampires on her free time. Incredible. I love her so much. I love, Buffy was my icon um, growing up. So the show Buffy is all about our main character as she saves the world again and again, fighting vampires, uh, stopping demons, you know, all this stuff. Um, and it's about her and her friends and all that. It's a very feminist and empowering show. Uh, and it was praised for being so feminist and empowering during its time. Um, that said, uh, Joss Whedon was really praised as a feminist. Ooh, premiered in March, 1997. Uh, oh yes, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so Joss Whedon was praised as a feminist. Um, but it's been revealed and People are saying it's been revealed like this past week. That's because Charisma Carpenter, who was one of the actresses on the show, uh, she has spoken up this past week. But this is not the first time she's spoken up about it. It was revealed that Joss was horrible to the women working on his show. Um, specifically Charisma Carpenter, who played uh, kind of almost like an antagonist, like the popular mean girl. Uh, but then she becomes one of like one of Buffy's friends and she actually is part of a spin-off show and it would and she reveals that when she was pregnant on the spin-off show uh she got pregnant and Joss like was um I don't know how much I can say without TikTok taking down the live. I don't know YouTube's rules uh but I know TikTok will take down the live if I say wrong things. Um so she was uh Joss was like telling her to get rid of it i'm trying to avoid saying things uh was saying like think of how horrible this is for the show and treated her horribly yelling at her getting in her face and he uh do i give spoilers for the show yes i will um he kills off her character. Well, he puts her in a coma as punishment, then then brings her back just to kill her off. Uh, so he treated her like trash. He was horrible to her. He was horrible to the other, um, I'd say old enough, yeah. He was horrible to the other uh, actresses on the show. Uh, specifically, uh, Michelle Trachtenberg, who uh, you guys may know, she was in the Disney movie Ice Princess. She was the main character in that. She was on Buffy before that. She played Buffy's younger sister. Um, will this live be saved on YouTube? It will. Um, so she played Buffy's younger sister. She was 15 when she was filming that show. 15. And they had a rule on set that Joss Whedon was not allowed in a room with her because of how he would act. Because he was that inappropriate and that disgusting. She was 15. That is horrifying. Like the fact that there was actually a rule that he could not be in a room with her. That is terrifying. Um, I feel so bad for what Michelle had to go through in that show. So anyways, I don't know what, why I'm bringing this up now. Um, and then um, apparently there might be an option to uh, save TikTok Live sooner, download them. Yes, there is an option to download them now, which I'm very excited about. Um, but yeah, so not to mention, like if you look back on Buffy too, um, a lot of it, so this show is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. If you look back on it, there's also like a lot of things where you're watching, you're like, I want to do finger guns, but I couldn't, so my hand was in my sleep. But like, there's some racist stuff in there. There is some like stuff that they say is like feminist, but actually is kind of misogynistic. Um, not to mention the fact that they had like one actor, uh, I'm trying to be vague too, so I don't spoil some things, but this is thing. Um, oh, I don't know if I can say this. TikTok will get mad at me for it. Uh, he also had a problem with one of the actors um, because uh, this character was supposed to be a villain. And um, so this character was supposed to be a villain. And then um, this one actor, everyone really liked him. So they ended up keeping him on. This character ended up having a redemption arc, kind of. Uh, ended up getting into a relationship with Buffy, despite the fact that they were previously a villain, original enemies to lovers. But the audience loved this character too much. And Joss actually physically like forced this actor up against the wall and told this actor that he doesn't care what the fans think, he's dead to him. Um, what the fuck that said this actor also done some creepy stuff so like let's not uh let's not 
let's not put this actor on a pedestal either. Um, so, uh, yeah, he said, like, he's dead to him. He doesn't care what the fans think. And then writes an episode where the fans were all really loving this, like, they were doing good things for this character, writes an episode uh, where the character just decides to, um, I'm trying to say stuff without saying it. Uh, trigger warning, uh, also, just major trigger warning for assault. Uh, so this character assaults Buffy. Um, it's kind of out of nowhere. Uh, and it's very horrifying to watch. It's so uncomfortable to watch. Apparently, the actor was so uncomfortable having to do that scene. Like, he he said that he was, like, curled up. Like, he was, like, curled up, like, in a ball in between filming it. Because it was so horrible for him. And he, like, did not want to do it. And it was all as punishment because the fans liked his character too much. So Joss wanted to destroy it. Like, what the fuck? Oh, anyways. Joss Whedon's a mess. Um, do I say and watch this? Do I don't read my book? <laughs> Difficult decisions. Yeah. No, can't help you there. Uh, also, this has nothing to do with that question that's on screen. Um, so Joss Whedon's a mess. Um, and yeah, so those are just some things. But the, this relates to what uh, shows from childhood uh, have aged terribly versus have aged very well. I think Buffy, in some areas, ages very well in a lot of the discussions about trauma, uh, a lot of I think there are some areas where it excelled a little bit, um, especially for its time. It was the first show to have a kiss between two women. Um, it did. I still cry every single time I hear Anya's speech from the episode called The Body. Oh, my God, that I still cry. Um, so I think it settled in some areas, but it aged terribly. One, when you look at... Um, just there's like some racist and misogynistic stuff in there that like Joss seemed to try to brush over by being like, look at how feminist the show is. Like, no, that's still super problematic. And then also when you look at how Joss treated his actors, that's horrifying. Um, anyways, I may do a full video on this because Buffy was really that was my childhood. I am not kidding when I tell you my personality in uh high school was Buffy. I made my friends by going up and being like, hey, have you seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer? It was literally everything. I still have a poster that's in a lot of my videos um, of Buffy. I met uh, one of the actors. I actually have met two of the actors. Um, I actually had one of the actors following me on Instagram for a while. That was really cool. That's when I ran a Buffy fan account on Instagram. Um, I had a Buffy Tumblr blog. I still do. Uh, I love Buffy. So, um, yeah, this is all, like, obviously, I feel like it's just such important stuff to talk about. But also, I think it's really interesting to see how everyone's discussing this stuff now about Joss. But this isn't the first time people have been talking about it. One, that thing where that actor talked about filming that scene that made him uncomfortable and when Joss physically got in his face. Uh, and explaining how Joss, like, physically, like, held him against a wall and said that, like, him and his character were dead to him. That had come out years ago. Charisma Carpenter explaining her mistreatment and how she was punished for getting pregnant on the show. Her explaining uh, all that. She had talked about that years ago. I have, I don't know, like she made a post about it now, but it just amazes me that this has been pretty public knowledge um, and people are acting so surprised. This isn't surprising. Joss has been a dick for a while. Um, like, that's just been pretty common knowledge, and people are acting like they've never heard of it, and like, how could he? And I feel like it's because, oh, he just kept getting different things, and people are like, oh, they're, like, you know what, but he's working on the Avengers, and so, like, it kept getting brushed under the rug, even though it was horrible stuff. So anyways, that's a long rant, um, that no one has asked for. Uh, can we ask, ask questions questions the stream? Hell yeah, go ahead. I met James Marsters at Buffy Con. He seemed really nice. I met James Marsters uh, that I met him at Wizard World. Um, I actually got a photo with him and uh, I signed it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, he also, so I signed it. He signed it. Yeah, I signed the photo of him. Why would I do that? Uh, but uh, yeah, my dad also hates him, which is entertaining because 
So he played Spike, uh, and when James Marsters signs things, he'll usually write bite me on it, because Spike is a vampire, it's a whole thing. My dad didn't know under any of that, so he just saw that, um, and he got so mad. Um, he just thought James Marsters was being, like, a creep and, like, being horrible, and I'm just like, no, that's, that's just his character. That's just, yeah. But, um, different reasons James Marsters is a creep and horrible that I just learned recently. Um, so yeah, we show the photo of James Marsters. I don't know where it is, actually. I kind of lost it. I didn't have a digital one. I only had a physical one and I don't know what happened to it, but I was blonde. So, I mean, we don't really want to see that anyways. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, I have that baby photo too. Yeah, my dad got so angry. So I'm glad you're glad you're not that I'm not the only one you got it too. My dad got so upset, and I was just like, no, that's just this character. Uh, and he still, to this moment, um, to this moment, always mentions uh, that fact. Like literally, there was an announcement that James Marsters uh, might be getting a divorce, and my dad was like, oh, hey, hey, Katie, that guy I hate, that creepy guy, he's, he might be getting a divorce. I'm just like, okay, dad. Um, he's still bitter about it to this day. But you know what? You know, that's, that's valid. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anyways, do I need to reach out on Bone Forces of Crows? You don't need to, but I recommend it. Um, who's your favorite Ray Ordenverse character? Nico. Uh, how many posters do you have in your room? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. I have forty posters uh, just on this wall. I also have my little art wall, but those aren't really posters. Those are just little art prints. And then I also have my tapestry. Um, but yeah, forty posters. Right? Is that what I said? Or thirty-nine? You have such a good dad. I do. He's the best. Um, kind of different question. Books that remind you of of Bookington members. Okay, well, Chloe, when I think of you, what do I think of? I think of Ash Princess, to be honest. Uh, when I think of Polly, I think of the Covenant series. When I think of Danny, I think of Crescent City. Um, when I think of Angel, I think of A Song of Achilles. Um, what other members do you want me to do? When I think of Ian, I think of Strange the Dreamer. Um, Bookington, by the way, is our book club. Um, I should probably also do the other admins too. When I think of Madison, what do I think of when I think of Madison? <laughs> I think of Warrior Cats, not gonna lie. Um, oh, Poppet, yeah, when I think of Poppet, what do I think of? I didn't know you were in the stream, I forgot, even though I saw your message, well, I'm an idiot. Uh, ooh, okay, what do I think of when I think of Poppet? <laughs> I honestly don't think of a book at first, I just think of Animal Crossing. Um, I don't know why. Uh, that's just my immediate thought is Animal Crossing. Sorry, Poppin. You don't got a book. You're too cool. Um, what about Jewels? When I think of Jewels, for some reason, I'm thinking Kingdom of the Wicked. I don't know why that's the book that pops in my head for Jewels right now, but that is. Um... <laughs> I'm just laughing at how Poppet, I couldn't even, my mind just immediately was just like, oh, Animal Crossing. That's not a book. Um, <laughs> but that's apparently in my mind, it's the equivalent. Uh, so yeah. Uh, anyways, let's see. What books have aged like a fine wine? What books have aged like a rye vegetable? Uh, so books that have aged like a fine wine. Ooh, I don't know. Pride and Prejudice? It's aged a lot. Staged really well. Um, the Wrath and the Dawn, I first read it when it first came out almost six years ago, and it just it aged well uh, for me. Six years, but you know, six years isn't a lot, but it's still good. Um, and then, yeah, both that uh, didn't age well matched. Uh, to be honest, didn't like it to begin with. The selection did not age well. Harry Potter did not age well. Could have aged well if it wasn't for J.K. Rowling. Um, how old you please don't feel offended by my question. I'm not offended, I'm 23, and I remembered this time. Yeah, guys, I remembered my age. We're making progress here. I forgot last time. A character you absolutely hate. Um, a character I hate. Mal from Shadow and Bone. I feel a little guilty about that one, uh, but I'm not a fan. 
Whoops. Uh, I need to make a project on the development of character. Can you recommend me a character? Ooh, character development. Talk about Kaz from Sits of Crows. Kaz has fantastic character development. Other character development, you can talk about Severin from uh, The Gilded Wolves. Uh, fantastic character development. M Matthias from Sits of Crows. Matthias from Sits of Crows. Impeccable character development. I'd argue that's the best character development of the book. I don't care what you say. Like, everyone else has good ones, but... Matthias has the best. Why do you hate Mal? Honestly, I don't even really hate Mal. It's more, I just kept getting mildly annoyed by him. And then the fact that he kept, like, no one point, like, the fact that he never had any repercussions for his actions in those books really annoyed me. Like, he was, he was toxic, but in a casual way, where, like, the Darkling was toxic in an overt way. And so it bothered me that, like, people were like, oh, the dark lane is like so toxic and so horrible. You should be with Mal instead. But like Mal's toxic and horrible too, just a different shade. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I don't like Mal. Um, that said, to be honest, I don't like despise him. It's just the one character I can think of who I'm supposed to like, who I wasn't a fan of. Uh, otherwise I usually like everything. I am Blade. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Blade there. Matthias is underrated. You're right, and you should say it. Uh, same guy, different fonts. Yep, I don't like Mal either. I feel like a lot of people don't. Uh, unrelated, but I'm so obsessed with your hair. Thank you. Uh, I was surprised. I did not think it would cooperate today, but it did. Uh, I'm almost back to liking my hair. Almost. Um, I just need to trick myself into thinking it's long again. Oh, it's so short. Uh, I just made myself sad. We're not going to think about that. Um, I, I loved my hair. Uh, see if I, if I tilt my head a lot, then it's almost the length it was at before. If I just like tilt. Uh, but ever since I cut it, I have been feeling really insecure about my hair and not pretty. So, um, we're trying to get over that. Uh, we're working on it. It's a, it's a work in progress. Um, what makes a book good for you? Gotta have good characters with good character development. Gotta have believable relationships. And um, I'm trying to think of other things. The plot honestly doesn't have to be good. Uh, but it can't be boring. Like, it just has to be interesting, but it doesn't have to be, like, a, like fascinating or, like, super unpredictable. Um, also, it's gotta have diversity and representation. Um... So, yeah, that's that's very important to me. Uh, Kate never came up. You're gorgeous. Love you. <laughs> uh, do you watch anime? I used to, but I don't really anymore. What's your career? Uh, so I am a library clerk, but I'm in school for computer science and mathematics, and I want to be a librarian. Your hair is so pretty cool. Guys, you. I, one day it'll grow back to the length it was at, and I'll be happy again. Um, it's just gonna take time, but until then, I'm going to pretend to be good. Have you tried the curly girl method for your hair? Uh, I've been into it. That's actually, I, I, that's what I use. Yeah, I love the curly girl method. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that for two years now, maybe three, maybe I don't know time anymore. Time is fake. Three years. It's gonna be three years in April, I think. Um, so I love the curly girl method. It saved my hair. Um, we're still figuring it out. So I just got my first curl cut. Uh, so I know I've been doing the method for a while, but I haven't gotten any curl cuts until this uh, last month, uh, which is why it got cut so short. Um, but we're almost getting there, and it's been getting healthier and healthier, honestly. Uh, books that remind you of WandaVision, The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer, if you want unreliable narrator. If you want uh, girl with scary power, people afraid of her, uh, The Darkest Minds. Um, where'd you get those posters? They are all from uh, mostly conventions, to be honest. Uh, Books with Mythology, Lore by Alexandra Bracken, The Covenant Series by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and then since you didn't specify Greek, uh, we're also going to throw in The Star Touched Queen by Rashmi Chakshi. I can never pronounce her last name because I have an issue pronouncing K's and I, I feel so guilty. Uh, Books Without Romance. Um, why am I blanking? Why am I blanking? I know I'm, I'm like picturing it. Um, and it's by... An author, Lori Emily. It was a book club book. And there's no romance. Also, This Savage Song by V.E. Schwab. Um, Forest of Souls. Forest of Souls. Forest of Souls by Lori Emily. 
Uh, I have a choice of any book I want to read for school. What do you recommend? We free the, no, we hunt the flame. We hunt the flame. Read that one first. We free the stars. It's the sequel. Uh, is that guitar worth reading? Eh. Eh. Um, it's fine. Have you read The Henna Wars? No, but I want to. Um, it is on my TBR. I just want to check, see if I made sure with all the questions. Oh, was Buffy bisexual? Um, so in the show, she wasn't explicitly. That said, you get the vibes. In the comics, I, I, I think they confirmed it in the comics. Um, I think in the comics, yeah. Yeah, I think she's bi in the comics. Um, because I remember she, I'm pretty sure, um, this is, this is the tough part, but I'm pretty, because I remember when that season, I think it was season nine in the comics, um, yeah, but I think she ends up dating Satsu, I'm, I'm looking it up now, yeah, so her and Buffy, uh, Satsu and Buffy done a relationship. Yeah, okay. I haven't read the comics, all of them. Um, but I read some of them, not all of them. And I just remembered um, that. Yeah, I'm literally looking it up. Uh, so in the comics, Buffy is by in the TV show. Uh, she is not. And there's debate over the comics, how canon they are. Uh, but I choose to believe Buffy is by. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> you also have in the show, you have Willow, um, who she does identify as a lesbian later on, but she's also seen in a relationship with a man early on in the show. So like, uh, but yeah, but I believe she identifies as a lesbian. Um, and then I'm trying to think what other rep we have, uh, but that's in the show specifically, TV is just show specific. Um, that's what we have. Then there's Faith, who's just Faith. I love Faith so much. Um, how do you get yourself out of a reading slump? Okay, so if you're in a reading slump, um, I recommend rereading old favorites and reading books that are light and easy to read. Um, so I also like to switch up genres. If I read a lot of fantasy, I'll read the contemporary because they're a little bit easier and they're good for getting out of slump. Okay, why fantasy standalone reps? Um, with diversity. Uh, Girl Serpent Thorn by um, Melissa Bashardust. I have to stare at my shelves. Ooh, uh, Sorcery of Thorns. Uh, you have a bi love interest. It's just, I love that. Um, that but that's also standalone. To Kill a Kingdom. Uh, that's another good one. Uh, technically, The Star Touch Queen by, by Rashi Chosky is a. Uh, Technically, that is a standalone. Well, okay, it can be read as a standalone, but technically it's part of a series. Technically, there's a companion novel, but it can be read as a standalone. Uh, and I love it. So I'm putting it in there. And yeah, we're going we're gonna to go with those. Uh, all right. Smell me grammar lessons. Uh, books with the bi main character. Uh, okay, so some of my favorite books with bi main characters. Girl, Serp, and Thorn. Um, so a lot of these, they don't specify if they're bi or pan. Uh, so take it as you will. Um, but Girl Serpent Born, Small Town Hearts, um, by Lily Vale. Um, I have to stare at my shelves. I believe Don't Date Rosa Santos. Uh, I believe she's by in that book, but I cannot, I have not read it yet, but I know I really want to. Um, so there's that. And then I'm trying to think with more... Uh, of Fire and Stars is another one. So there we go. Uh, best underrated fantasy series slash standalones. Um, Dance of Thieves. Okay, Dance of Thieves, Star Touch Queen. Um, the Raven Spire series by CJ Redwine. And Rose Marks by Livia Blackburn. Uh, is Shadow and Bone worth reading? I think so. Thoughts on Throne of Glass? I enjoyed it, but the representation in it is trash. Um, so be aware. Thoughts on the Ark of Sights trilogy? I actually haven't read it yet. I'm a little ashamed. Books with pirates. Uh, Daughter of the Pirate King, uh, To Kill a Kingdom, Seafire by Natalie C. Parker, and, uh, there's another one. All the Stars and Teeth. <laughs> Once again, want more people to read that down north. Same. Have you watched Lee? No, I probably won't. 
will you be buying slash reading a tortoise over flame? So I will be reading it. I did not want to buy it, but I pre-ordered it months ago. Um, and I tried to cancel the pre-order and fun fast Barnes and Noble won't let you cancel. Um, I was on the phone with them today because <laughs> I tried to cancel it a while ago and then I gave up. And then today I was like, let's try again. And I had to give up again. Um, but yeah, so you cannot unfortunately cancel it. Apparently their rules are you can only cancel an order 15 minutes after you make it. So there's a 15 minute window where you are allowed to cancel an order. And if you do not cancel it within that time, you cannot cancel it and you can just return it once it arrives, which I might do, but then I'll have to pay shipping. So I might just give it to someone. I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure it out. But uh, unfortunately I've bought it and I'm bitter about it. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm still trying. In my head, I'm just like, can I still, can I still convince them to cancel it for me? But I don't wanna make, their day horrible you know like I feel so bad for people who work customer service um so yeah those are my thoughts on that if any of you guys know how to get Barnes Noble to cancel an order please tell me oh my gosh Sarah hi I love you um I just, I just want to say that I love you you're the best uh so yeah both slide scissors a sword and tall I actually haven't read that so if you let me know what you like most about it um, then I can give you reps based off that. Um, so yeah, when did you start reading properly? I started my obsession in like ninth or 10th grade. I was reading before that, but like the obsession started then. I love you. Oh, Sarah, I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. I hope you're doing okay. Miss you. Um, so yeah. And let's see, what's with the Dark Academia aesthetic? Wilder Girls and Sorcery of Thorns. Uh, both of those definitely have it. Books with snakes, hell yeah. Queen of nothing the original snake book. Um, and what else? Oh, don't look at YouTube. I'm sorry, I've neglected. Okay, after this question. Uh, more books with snakes. Um, White Hot Kiss. I already have my video about snakes, but there have to be more books with snakes. Girl, Serpent, Thorn, The Beautiful. Um, those are all the ones I just mentioned in that video. Where are my snake books? This is, this is a crime. We need more snake books. That's so unfair. Um, I'm genuinely getting heated about the lack of snakes in books. Um, uh, was there a good idea to read multiple books at once because there's so many books I want to read? I think so. I read a lot of books at once. Um, I'm reading four books right now and I'm about to start a fifth that I'm reading at once. So I think it's fine. But then again, it's always up to you and what you can handle. Um, oh geez, so slower on YouTube. Oh no. Uh, YA book recommendations similar to Bridgerton. Ooh, okay. Honestly, there's no YA books that I feel like match the vibes perfectly. Um, I would say The Stars We Steal. It's a sci-fi, but it has like that courting and you know, all the season type vibes. So if you want that, uh, you can get it through there. Um, Otherwise, there's really no books that fully match the Bridgerton vibes. It makes me sad. We need more YA Bridgerton books. Um, which of these Bridgerton brothers would you most want to kiss, marry, or kill? Anthony, Benedict, or Colin? Um, okay. Kiss Benedict, marry Colin, kill Anthony. I'm so sorry, Anthony. I know so many people love him, but one Colin is just the best. Hot take, I prefer Benedict to Anthony. Um, a lot of, I almost prefer Benedict to Colin. Almost, it, it switches every week. Um, but that's what I gotta vote. Um, so yeah. So let's see, which popular YA, which YA contemporary romance, popular or criminally underrated, would you wanna recommend to fans of To All The Boys I've Loved Before series? Ooh, okay. I would recommend, if you like To All The Boys I've Loved Before, I would recommend Tweet Cute, just because I adore it. Um, same with You Have a Match. You Have a Match has a lot of the family stuff that you uh, see in Tall Boys I Love Before. Um, I would recommend, uh, oh, what is it called? Why I have to stare at my shelves for this, but it's hiding from me. Where is it? Where is it? Um, tell Me Three Things. Uh, right? That, that's it. Yeah, Tell Me Three Things. I'd recommend that for Tall the Boys I Love Before fans. Uh, okay, let's see what else. What book have you reread the most? Probably Daughter of the Pirate King. By Pan rep recommendations. So I mentioned for Girl Serpent Thorn, Small Town Hearts, 
Um, don't take Rosa Santos. Um, do staring at my shelves. Ooh, Sea Fire. Sea Fire. Um, we gotta stare at the shelves some more. The Gilded Wolves has some. And, oh, you must smell like a body LaRue. So, yeah. Um, let's see. What's the book with the main character that likes, uh, reading? My immediate thought is the Infernal Devices. Um, that's just like, yeah, the Infernal Devices. Um, what about some other ones, though? I feel like that was such a huge trend to have main characters who enjoyed reading. And then, like, it became, like, people just all moved away from it. Um, I don't know why, though. I'm now staring at my shelves to try to find more. And I'm struggling, at least with my fantasy books. But let's look at contemporaries. Because contemporaries can sometimes be a little bit more uh, easier to find readers um, as main characters. There is a whole series. Um, and I cannot remember the name. And this is going to drive me insane. Um, I'm looking at my shelves trying to find it. There's a whole series. And it actually follows a reader who decides to take advice from... Uh, bookishly ever after. It's really cute. Oh, Echo North does. Yes, good point. More reason for people to read Echo North. Uh, favorite series? Sets of Crows, We Hunt the Flame, and uh, The Wrath and the Dawn. Can you read We Feed the Stars before the other one? No. So I'd recommend reading We Hunt the Flame first, because uh, it chronologically happens first, and it might be a little confusing. Uh, books with good love triangles. Girl, Serpent, Thorn, um, Theme for All Devices. I have to stare at my shelves for these. Um, I like the love triangle in um, the Covenant series, but it is a little hit or miss. Uh, I will say I do enjoy the love triangle in uh, the White Hot Kiss series probably a little bit more. I like the love triangle in The Wrath and the Dawn a lot. Um, I love love triangles where it doesn't feel like a love triangle. Um, what other ones? I'm staring at my shelves for more ideas, but this is hard. I can't think of more. <laughs> I always struggle to come up with these. I've been thinking about this a lot today based on the video I posted. Um, and I was struggling to come up with a lot of them because I'm very specific in what I feel like needs to happen in a love triangle for it to be good. Uh, not even specific. Oh, so we, uh, no, that's not really a love triangle. That's more of just like direct line. It's just like line ends, new line begins. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the, the, that's that. Uh, what's your favorite series? Oh, wait, I answered that. Sister Crows, We Hunt the Flame, and The Wrath of the Dawn. Uh, top three favorite series? Those three. Um, <laughs> I've read The Raven Boys, yes, and I loved it. It's so good. Megan, is that a birthday hat? Hell yeah. Um, hell yeah, it is. Um, but yeah. Have you, uh, oh, the Storm Crows really good. Oh, I love that book. It's so good. Uh, I already answered that one, yes, but just in case, uh, I did not want to be, but I pre-ordered it months ago, and Barnes & Noble won't cancel my order. I've tried twice now. Uh, I've called them, which sucks, because I hate calling people. So, unfortunately, I, I bought it. Um, and, yeah. Hey, did me a fictional character draw? Also, I love your sweater. Thank you. Uh, ooh, character. Why do I default Cass Brecker? He's just one of my favorite characters. I just love Cass. Can you tell me why I cry when I listen to Marina? Uh, that's for a therapist answer. Have you seen Queen Stamba? It's so good. I have not. Should I? Sprayed edges, yes or no? Hell yes. Uh, when did you start reading? I've been always been a reader since, like, I was bitter in kindergarten because my friends started reading before me. Uh, but I became obsessed in, like, ninth or 10th grade. Best and worst book uh, you've read. Best book, probably The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Worst book, uh, we're going to go with the popular answer and not the really niche one no one's heard of. Uh, so the popular one is Crescendo by Becca Fitzpatrick. Hated that book. Um, why do you not want to read it? Uh, Silver Flames. Just to Sarah... Uh, Sarah J. Moss is just super problematic, and I don't want to buy it. So I say that I don't want to read it. I would read it, but I'd rather get it secondhand. Um, so yeah. Do you like Serpent and Dove? I do, but that one also has issues with diversity and representation. Books get you into fantasy. Uh, Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. Uh, Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. And let me stare at my shelves again. Ooh, Tiger at Midnight by Swati Tirtala. Those are some good ones. 
Uh, when are you going to read Press the City? One day. Have you watched or read The 100? I haven't, but I want to. Are you excited for the new Shadow and Bone show? Yes, very excited. Um, all right, and there we go. We got through all the little questions there. I'm so proud of myself. Um, okay. I just get proud of myself whenever I get through those, but there's still the questions on the spreadsheet. And uh, that was the truth, your favorite book. And I did a nice try. You'll never convince, you'll never get me on your side there. Uh, are you a believer in authors learning and getting better in representation? Yes. I think authors can learn. They can definitely grow. Everyone can. Uh, everyone starts from a place of ignorance and has to learn and get better. And I believe especially authors should. Out for the day, you look really nice today. Thank you. Hold on. Wait. Oh, this is, hold on. Let, let's fix this. Ready? Okay. Outfit of the day today. I'm not wearing shoes. Uh, so we got this top. It has roses on it. This sweater that's just really cozy. And these jeans, and they're not skinny jeans. Look at me. I'm, I'm Gen Z and I'm not wearing shoes. No one screenshot that. <laughs> uh, gotta pay for those. Anyways, um, yeah, and I'm also wearing these earrings and this little moon necklace. Uh, so that's that. And, and, and I filmed a makeup tutorial. I just almost knocked something over. I filmed a makeup tutorial to someone asked. So I did it. And it's going to be posted eventually. Maybe tomorrow. Who knows? TikTok's not promoting any of my stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'll be heading as the quote board. <laughs> heading what? I'm concerned now. Uh, so yeah, I love those ears. Oh, thank you guys. Um, I also just ordered more clothes. Uh, Gen Z will be proud. I ordered some not skinny jeans because I only have two pairs of jeans. These jeans and the jeans I wear in most of my videos. Um, those are my go-to jeans. Uh, the chair is protecting your feet pants that you show giving them away for free. I know. I know. I'm ashamed. Uh, I'm Gen Z. I'm not wearing shoes. I guess that's just a Gen Z thing. Uh, not wearing shoes. Never. You never have to wear shoes. But um, I'm technically Gen Z, but I sometimes feel like millennial. Like I got the side part, but also I was born in, in 98. So like I'm at the cusp and it's weird. Uh, so yeah, but um, I wish YouTube had streamers. I'm never going to be that power. Um, but uh, <laughs> So that's uh, my outfit today. We're proud. I used to wear this shirt with like this one skirt and I wear it all the time, but now I'm wearing it with jeans and I'm proud of myself for not feeling insecure about it, even though I'm wearing a giant sweater over it. This sweater is so cozy. It's fine. But I did order more clothes, uh, including two pairs of jeans that aren't skinny jeans, mostly because I wear a lot of, so I used to wear a lot of skinny jeans when I would wear baggier tops and I liked that like blend, like one thing baggy, one thing skinny, but I'm wearing a lot of like tighter tops. So then I feel like it'd be nice to have like some baggier jeans. Uh, so I got like a pair of like mom jeans uh, and then I got a pair of like black straight leg ripped jeans cause I don't have any black jeans. Um, so now I can live my 13 year old dreams and dress in like a black shirt, black jeans with chains. Oh, black eyeliner, black lipstick, guys, it's gonna happen. Oh, I'm very excited about it. Um, so yeah, that is uh, my plan for that. Uh, and I cannot wait for that to arrive. I also have like a button up shirt that has like puffy sleeves to go full pirate on you guys. And then I also just have like a normal white blouse and then like a little skirt and then some belts because I don't own belts and I thought that'd be a good thing to get. And I also got some earrings that are a moon and I like moons. And that was my entire about bit of shopping. I don't shop for um, clothes often. So I'm very excited. Uh, difference between bi and pan. So bi is defined as attracted to more than one gender. Uh, so this can mean attracted to every gender or attracted to only two genders. You know, it, it can really depend. Uh, and it, it depends. Some people are attracted to like specific genders. Some people are just attracted to every gender. It doesn't matter. Uh, pan means um that gender does not play into attraction so gender uh it, it has no part in this they're just attracted to people first uh gender is secondary um so that is the difference i hope that makes sense uh have you read mphf 
PC. What does that mean? Uh, hold on, let me see if that was written fully out in the chat. Um, because I don't know what that stands for. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I can't find it in the chat. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know what it means. Oh, mad. No, no, I don't know what it is. Have you read Beetle and the Hollow Bones? I have not. Have you read Girls, Paper, and Fire? Uh, really now, I haven't, but I want to. How excited are you for Tubbit? So excited. Oh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I have not read it, but it is on my TBR. I do own it. Uh, have you read Dose of the Shadow Market? It has made me stop. No, should I? I don't read her novellas. I'm lazy. Uh, have you read This Time That's Here? I have not. I'll have to add that to my TBR. Uh, I'm why do Americans wear shoes in their houses? I'm disgusted by those humans. I can't wear shoes in the house. It's weird. I never wear my shoes in my house. Uh, book rats for those who love Loki. Um, ooh. Okay, so if you like Loki. For some reason, I'm thinking Wicked Saints. I was making my Marvel video, and I was going to do a, if you like Loki, read this book. Uh, and, like, for some reason, my mind kept going to Wicked Saints. Even though it isn't the perfect mix. Like, he's not, like, a lovable trickster. Uh, the character I'm thinking of. But they just give me similar vibes sometimes. There is a character named Loki in the Trail Trilogy, and I feel like he, he gives Loki vibes sometimes. So the Trail Trilogy. It's fun. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any others that come to mind with Loki vibes, but not really. Uh, what do you think about trigger warnings? Because I see them as very important. Not everyone agrees. I see them as very important, too. Uh, that said, I think there is, oh, I think Heartless for Loki vibe ish. Oh, yes, I agree. Uh, so, yeah, so I think trigger warnings are very important. I think there should be trigger warnings in books. Um, that said, I think there's like, there's like, there needs to be like discussion about what should have a warning because I'm someone who gets triggered by a lot of things. And so there are some triggers that I do expect there to be warnings from, and I think there should be warnings for. Uh, and then there are some things like everyone has smaller triggers. You know, there are things that not everyone can account for that I think should be understood, like that no one will be able to know for sure, and you can only take care of yourself in that situation. Like, I'm tr if I see ants, I'm gonna panic. Uh, so, but I don't expect anyone to put a trigger warning for ants. That said, unaliving is triggering for me. So I do want to see trigger warnings for unaliving. Uh, I think that and like some of the other like major things name mainly like unaliving uh, sexual assault. Um, I think those uh, should always have trigger warnings. Um, but then when it comes to more niche things, it's a little bit, it gets into a gray area. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. So that's in books and in movies. I think they should have those. Um, but then when it comes to, like, people talk about if you should put trigger warnings when you recommend books, in which case I don't think someone should put trigger warnings when you recommend books because I think it's really important for people to know how to look for them themselves. Um, because... I like if I'm to recommend a book, I'm not gonna be able to account for everyone's potential triggers. Uh, so what may be something that's a priority in my head may not be a priority in someone else's head. So I think I actually have been planning on making a video uh, that I still really want to do teaching people how to uh, figure out uh, if a book has triggers in it. There's a few different sites that you can go to. So I want to make a video uh, showing that because uh, it's stuff I do when I when I pick up a book and I'm not sure if it's going to include something that's triggering to me, I do that research. Um, so that's my thoughts with that. Why is the friends lover strokes not being taught on book talk, book to bookstagram as much as enemies lovers? You know, I don't know. Uh, people are sleeping on it and I'm bitter about it because friends to lovers is impeccable. It is amazing. We need more friends to lovers uh, racks. So, you know, it's being slept on. Why is adult romance very popular on book two and book top books from these days? That I've noticed as well. Um, I think, so I think it's a lot of the YA demographic that was really into YA growing up. And these avid readers who are the people on book two, book top bookstagram are getting older and wanting to read more adult romance. So like I noticed this myself, I started falling into adult romance like four years ago uh, and I started really enjoying it. So I think that is one thing. And then um, I also think that for the younger audiences, 
um, who really shouldn't be reading adult romances. Like they're not the demographic that should be picking it up. I think, I think they're so desensitized to that stuff from fan fiction that they're still picking it up anyways. So the demographic for it is much larger than would be expected and then than it probably should be. Um, so I think that might be why it's becoming so popular. People, so the younger audiences have become so desensitized to, you know, spice levels and butts because of fan fiction, because of the internet, um, that they've come to expect spicier stuff uh, in their books. The question of whether or not it should be there is different. Um, so that's why they're leaning more towards adult romance. I think the internet desensitized them. That said, I like, like YA books don't need spice, guys. Let's, let's not keep calling for that. I've seen people call for that. YA books do not need spice. They are minors. Uh, so yeah, can you explain the difference between YA romance and adult romance? Okay, yeah, so the difference is mainly in spice levels. So how many sex scenes and how in-depth they are. Uh, so adult romance will have, like, graphic sex scenes. And there will probably be a few, but, you know, you never know. In YA, uh, if there is a sex scene, it will be fade to black. You won't, none of it will be graphic, but there usually isn't that. Usually it's, like, the main big uh, part of it is, uh, like, the first kiss is, like, what it, what it leads up to. Um, so, yeah. Are we doing Q&A? Yes, we are. Um, so that is uh, the main difference there. And I have been noticing people have been calling for, like, spicy scenes in YA, and I would like to point out that YA characters are minors. Let's not do that. Um, so, yeah. I just had to lower the volume the one time I listened when I'm saying that's my mom. I'm sorry! Do you want to make it loud again? I can talk to your- I can apologize to your mom. <laughs> Just let me know. I would like to formally apologize, uh, formally apologize to your mom. Um, <laughs> uh, I would say not even graphic. There could be no sex or romance between adults. Uh, yeah, true. There could be, but in a lot of uh, a lot of like what is sold as adult romance, like of that specific genre, it usually has those scenes. But there are some where there's not really. But if it's going to be that genre, you could almost always expect it. Uh, who's the most problematic author you've ever read? Um, I don't know. J.K. Rowling? <laughs> Probably. Stranger to Lovers is Superior. You know what? You're right. You're right and you should say it. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways. Is Girl Sermon Thorne a standalone? It is. Uh, she said, well, I'm happy she apologized. <laughs> I'm just here to educate. I just don't want people too young to be going into the wrong books. I'm here to protect the children. Um, uh, so, yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, have you watched The Good Place? Yes, and I love it. I just laughed. Is that, that's been my lot. Whenever I would watch something with my parents, it would the, whoever I was watching would say the most inappropriate things, and they it would I usually would watch like completely like safe stuff, uh, but when I'm with my parents, all of a sudden they'll be talking about like the worst things, and I'll just be like, "Cool, time to go live under a rock for the rest of my life." Uh, are you excited for Atlas in a few days? I am, and I'm not like I don't like Sarah J. Moss, but I I am invested in the series, so yeah. Um, have you watched or read the 100? No, but I want to. My dog is sitting in my lap. This never happens. That is amazing. I'm here to protect the children. Add that to the quote board. That's my, it's my job here on TikTok. Uh, who's your favorite superhero? Ooh. Well, I'm watching WandaVision now, so I feel like I gotta say Wanda, because, like, we stand a queen. Yes, she's taking thousands of people hostage, but we've talked about my stance on people doing bad things. If they're hot, it's forgivable. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, I feel like I should apologize to your mom again. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, that being forgotten. Um, no, but also Wanda is like a victim. Like she, she's gone through so much. So what if she takes a few thousand people hostage? She's been through a lot. Give her a break. Oh, she's a therapist. Call a therapist before you make her a villain. Anyways, um, do you like Wattpad published books? I don't read a lot, but uh, I want to read more. They're mentally ill, like Wanda clearly is. It's forgivable. Exactly. 
Uh, but similar to the Raven Cycle in terms of being very character driven. Ooh, ooh, okay. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Just, yes. So character driven. Uh, and I think you would love that if you like the Raven Cycle. Um, I would also say uh, Star Touch Queen is very character driven. Um, and Rose March by Livia Blackburn. Um, so, yeah. Where are the therapists in the MCU? Exactly. She's grieving. Exactly. Um, Wanda Supremacy. What do you think of WandaVision? I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. Um, I think it's so great. I'm forcing my dad to watch it with me. Uh, and he's getting into it too. And my sister who's in Florida is watching it now too. And I'm just so proud. Uh, making my whole family watch WandaVision. Um, I've never been happier. Uh, <laughs> say it. It's a really bad depressive episode. Um, anyways. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So I really love it just in general i love the stylized um i love like how we go through the different decades i love how like really into it and all the different easter eggs and cameos there and i also love all of the comics references and cameos um and i cannot wait to see where it goes in the future i'm just so excited which of these popular tv shows would you want to watch rewatch or skip lee the vampire diaries are victorious so fun fact i've only watched one of those uh, so I will rewatch Victorious. I will watch The Vampire Diaries and skip Glee. I've only watched Victorious from that list. I watched one episode of The Vampire Diaries. Um, and then, um, I watched, like, half a season of Glee. Okay, you still haven't said anything about the Ian's quote saying we're sacrificing people in your name. I still need to know if you're ignoring us or if you're not surprised. Oh, okay, so I did see that, but I couldn't respond because I was at work. Um, and I remember... What's at that? I was so concerned. I need to know the story. Uh, I need to know what the story behind that was. What do you think of Cobra Kai? I haven't seen it. Uh, TC official book top mom. No, the official book top talk mom is Sarah Rosh. I will be book top soldier sister though. Um, any oh, whoops, hold on. Uh, any want any theories you want to discuss? Oh my god, the pun. Uh, well, one, I don't know who Mephisto is. Um, I don't even know if we're getting Mephisto, if we're getting Nightmare. Uh, we're all, we all seem so, like, convinced we're getting Mephisto, but what if we're getting Nightmare as the one who's controlling this? Because Wanda isn't controlling it. I don't care what you say. This is not Wanda. Uh, this is Mephisto or Nightmare or someone else. Agnes is definitely Agatha Harkness. Um, I think those children, they're, something's gonna happen to them. We're gonna get the House of M. Uh, stuff, and then they're gonna be brought back because we're gonna get Young Avengers. Uh, and if we do not see, uh, if we do not see Teddy and Billy together in the MCU, I will have to kill someone. Um, TikTok, I'm kidding. Um, am I? Uh, anyways, I think Wanda is going to get worse and worse, and I think she is going to go House of M. Um, I don't know if Pietro, uh, being Fox Pietro is bringing in the X-Men or if it's not. I heard from the traders that it probably isn't. Um, but uh, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm just going to wait and see. Uh, problematic authors nobody talks about. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not someone who calls people out a lot, but, like, all the main ones we talked about. Like, we talked about, um, we talked about Sarah J. Moss. We talked about, uh, Jennifer L. Armentrout with her diversity issues. We talked about Mackenzie Lee. We talked, I feel like we talked about all of them. Uh, the ones we don't really talk about is... Uh, the author of 13 Reasons Why has sexual assault allegations, uh, very credible ones. Uh, same with the author of The Maze Runner. Um, and then we also don't really talk about Cassandra Clare. We've talked about her issues with diversity and representation and whatever the hell the Mortal Instruments was, but we don't talk about the fact that she encourages her followers to bully minors on her Twitter account. Uh, so yeah. I heard that Holly Black is problematic. Uh, yeah, just with the representation issues again. But I think Holly Black can grow. I think she's shown... I think she's one of the authors. Like, Cassandra Clare had issues with diversity at first, but then, like, grew. And I think Holly Black can grow. I think we gotta give her time, though. She just finished, like, her... Like, she had written uh, another series beforehand. But this was really her first major series. Well, the other one did well. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the first one that, like, has been really major. Um, 
So I feel like we need to give her time to write something outside of the series before we judge. Um, too harshly. I think she can grow is basically what I'm trying to say with that. Um, Cassandra Clare has grown, but she hasn't grown when it comes to the bullying people on Twitter. She did that as recent as September. Um, so I'm not, I'm still not forgiving Cassandra Clare for that. And, uh, yeah. Um, I feel like everyone else we talked about. Um, Anna Todd. I don't really know anything about Anna Todd. Uh, I was about to say the author of The Maze Runner. Yeah. Um, I shocked myself. The HRV stand. Okay, but Sapphire to the Gods cover. Uh, I'm going to. <laughs> oh. Can we talk about the fact that Chain of Iron comes out in less than a month? I'm so excited. I was going to request an arc, then I realized how, uh, how, uh, soon it is. What does OP mean? Depends on what you're talking about. It can mean original poster or it can mean overpowered. Um, so it depends on the contest. Are you excited for Chain of Iron? So excited. Uh, James Spader's on the cast list. Thoughts? I don't, um, I don't know actors' names. Uh, so I'm a mess. I think all of books, at least, from what I've seen, are problematic. To be honest, now that I think about it, it seems like all of them are. No, an Enchantment of Ravens. That one, I think, I haven't thought too critically on that book in a while, though, so I could be wrong. But I don't know anything bad about that. I don't think she write a rock about someone who's barely the delicious culture uh, about. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, Spader Voices Ultron. Oh, yes, I did hear about that. I have no idea uh, what that'll mean. Um, so I don't, I, I don't know if that'll just be used for a flashback or if that will mean Ultron's still alive. The Twitch neglect is coming back. Maybe you'll realize it wasn't Twitch neglect. It was just Megan neglect. Um, which of these popular TV shows would you want to watch or rewatch or skip? The Office, Ships Creek, or WandaVision? So I actually never saw Ships Creek. That said, I think I would rewatch WandaVision, watch Ships Creek, and skip The Office. I like The Office, but I just haven't seen Ships Creek and I really want to. So, and like, I feel like I would like it more than The Office. Um, okay, Ian and I were playing Minecraft and we need to kill a bunch of animals, so we sacrificed them in your name just for fun. Then we killed my brother a few times. There may or may not have been a lava pit. That's really concerning. That's really concerning, Megan. Uh, for which book release are you just excited? Oh, I'm excited for Chain of Iron. And also, coming up soon, also Covet. Um, uh, excited for a lot of things. Um, constant state of excitement. Uh, so yeah, I think Ultra's the only villain that can come back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he is. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll see. We will see. Who's your godly parent? Athena. Uh, though sometimes I think it's Poseidon, but we've discussed how he's killing me. Uh, trying to, trying to, not actively. I'm the only one who actively does that. Uh, do I have to read the Mortal Instruments to read the other ones? Um, no, you don't have to. I recommend it, but you don't have to. Um, so the actors in the movie, she exposed movie scenes in a secret group chat. Oh my god, that's horrible. Um, yeah, no, I don't like her now. Um, <laughs> Uh, what's your all-time favorite Disney Channel original movie? Ooh. Ooh. All-time favorite Disney Channel original movie? Why did my mind immediately go to Life is Rough? That's not my favorite. But it's what my mind went to. I do enjoy it. High School Musical. High School Musical 2. Am I going to go with High School Musical 2? Um, I think it's High School Musical 2. Um, I do love Lemonade Mouth, Mouth, though. And I mean, Life is Rough is good. But yeah, um, uh, so yeah, I think that's my thing. Have you read King of Stars? Yes, and I love it. Justice for Darcy. <laughs> yes. Um, just yes. <laughs> High School Musical is superior. High School Musical 2 is superior. I will die on that hill. Um, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> anyways. I think I caught up with all the questions and I'm really proud of myself. This never happens. I can't believe there's sword soldiers just left Darcy there. Yeah, right? Spoilers for people. I'm so excited for Realm Breaker. Me too. I can't wait to read it. Uh, what are we talking about? That's a great question. I don't know anymore. I was also haunted by a bell demon. Is that is fun. Oh no. Koshin? <laughs> We're bringing back Koshin. Oh no. Oh no. In case you guys don't know, the ocean is trying to kill me. Um, this can either be because I am a daughter of Poseidon, or it can be because uh, Poseidon wants me dead. Uh, we don't know yet. 
but the ocean is trying to kill me. Um, I've been caught in three rip currents. I've accidentally swam with sharks and I have been taken out in a current towards a monk seal. Um, and, uh, yeah, I also swam into a whole pot of jellyfish once. That was really not fun. Um, oh, and when I was like an infant, I nearly drowned. Uh, I got, I was like two years old. It's so not an infant, but I was young. And I was at the ocean beach and I got knocked over by a wave. And, um, I was underwater and I was, I was down. And my uncle saved me. Uh, came for your daughter Poseidon. We are half siblings. Oh, yay. Oh, no. What'd you do to anger Poseidon? I don't know. I don't know. Um, the rip currents were the most fun, though. I will say, out of the things, like, that I would do again, I'll, I'm, I'm fine with another rip current. I, I wasn't a fan of the drowning. The shark thing was a little nerve-wracking, and the month seal was a little nerve-wracking, too. Um, but the, the rip currents, they were fine. I'd do that again. Please do not swim in rip currents. Please do do not swim in rip currents. It's very dangerous. I got lucky each time I got so lucky. Um, the sad part is I have to say I got lucky three times. The lifeguards had to jump in two of those three times. Uh, but I got back to the shore before they even got near me. It was fine. Um, yeah. That, that's a mess. The Pride and Prejudice helped pave the way for enemies to leverage romance books that would follow in the centuries. Kalma? Ooh, that's a good point. I think so. I think you're onto something there, yeah. Will you read Son of Achilles? Yes, I want to read it soon. Have you read Serpent and Dove? Yes, and I really liked it. Oh, I forgot I could bring that question up. Yes, I did, and I liked it, but the representation in it isn't great. Um, so yeah. Um, but that's how the ocean's feeling me. Who is the, who else is either a child of Athena or Iris and you don't know which? Also, what's a month seal? A month seal is a type of seal that is, uh, found in Hawaii. Um, so yeah, I was visiting my brother in Hawaii when there was a month seal in the lagoon we were swimming in and the lifeguard came on the loudspeaker yelling at everyone to go to shore. And I was the one who was furthest out in the lagoon. So like, okay, so this is the lagoon with open water over here. Well, actually, because there was like a little bit of an opening. The opening was actually more over here, so... Okay, this is this is the lagoon uh, with like, yeah, so this is the lagoon, right? This little circle here. Uh, and open water is up here, but there's like an opening. Um, I was right here. Everyone else was over here. Um, actually, they were more over here, but I was right here. And I was right near the opening. The month seal came in and was right here. I was like 10, 20 feet from the month seal. Everyone else was like 50, 60 feet from the month seal. Um, and we all got the call to come back in. And the current was pushing me out towards the opening, which is where the month seal was. So I had to, there wasn't like a major current, but it was like a slight current. Um, so I had to try to swim back this way in away from the month seal that was like 10 feet from me uh and month seals usually aren't dangerous uh, however they can be if they had a child nearby and we didn't know if there was a little month seal baby nearby uh so yeah that was nerve-wracking but then we all got to shore fine uh but i was the nearest one to it um and then some guy came up and he's like oh month seals nothing to worry about what you should worry about is the tiger shark that chased it in there and i was like cool nothing to think about that um, so yeah, what curse do you have on you first ants now the ocean? Do you do something that made Earth mad? I don't know. Maybe I'm just too powerful. Dawson, Zoya, I love Zoya so much. My dad accidentally kicked my brother into a pool when he was a baby. Oh no. Oh no. Um, I like that thought though, that I'm too powerful and that the world is just trying to kill me. I like the thought. That's fun. How was your Valentine's Day? I only cried once today, so pretty good. Uh, hi Kate, how are you doing today? The <laughs> one I just said before. Uh, hi, uh, so yeah, uh, definitely daughter beside him, welcome half sister. Uh, uh, let's see, um, uh, okay, I got to all those questions, okay, I just wanted to make sure before I go into the question things. How do you get out of a reading slump? So I scheduled time to read, but you asked a question following that up, so I'll respond to that. Uh, but also I reread old favorites and I switch up genres. Um, so how do you make time in a busy schedule? I read a book with me everywhere and I read every free second I have my lunch break at work. Uh, if I'm waiting in line for coffee, I don't drink coffee, but that's a made up scenario there. Um, if I'm driving, someone else is driving, not me. I'll sit in the passenger seat and read. Uh, I'll read in class. You didn't hear that one. And yeah, that's, that's what I'll do. 
Um, do you think those would be Illuminati in the MCU? I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm not good with theories. I don't theorize <laughs> that much. What was your favorite read so far this month? I've only read three books this month. I'm reading two right now, but I've only read three books. Uh, so of the three, I guess my favorite was, well, I reread Star Touch Stories, and I don't usually count rereads in my favorites, because then I'd be biased, because I loved it enough to reread it. Um, and so I would say my favorite of the two, which is The Traitor Queen and the Bridge Kingdom, would be uh, The Bridge Kingdom. Uh, so yeah, uh, which of these beloved Jane Austen love interests would you want to kiss, Mary kill? Mr. Darcy, Mr. Knightley, or Captain Wentworth? <sighs> I think I have to, have to marry Mr. Darcy, kiss Mr. Knightley, and kill Captain Wentworth. I think that's my verdict. Uh, I'm not going to think about that, but no, <laughs> terrified. Yeah, literally, that was me. Uh, reading in class, who does that? Yeah, right? Who? Who would ever do that? Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I read through my Zoom classes. I'm out for the entire week. I'm so happy. I'm jealous. Uh, it's like, I'm, I like the thought that I'm destined to get kidnapped into a magical world. It is a nice thought. Um, my parents bought me books for Valentine's Day because they didn't want me to feel alone. That's so sweet. My parents, ever since I was a kid, uh, they would get me a stuffed animal and chocolate for Valentine's Day. I assume they would probably have stopped once I was dating someone, but um, I've been alone for Valentine's Day every single Valentine's Day, so they just bought me another stuffed animal. It's really cute. <laughs> they would also get one for my brother, too, um, but he's in Japan, so he doesn't get his, his Valentine's Day stuffed animal anymore. When my sister lived was here for last Valentine's Day with us, she got one. Uh, so yeah, that, that's just fun stuff. So I have a new stuffed animal. Uh, is your next read with me tomorrow? Yes, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, reading Yummy Kami and Mara Dyer, but I'm stuck. Oh no, I love that book though. It's so good. I promise it's worth it. Uh, wait, your brother's in Japan? Yes, my brother lives in Japan. So, uh, my brother's in the Navy. Um, so he was stationed at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii for a few years. So that's why I have a lot of stories from Hawaii because we would visit him and I miss it so much. Um, it was one of the few places I was ever happy. Um, and then he uh, recently was uh, sent over to Japan. So he's now in Japan for the rest of um, his time in the Navy, which is just two years. Um, so he's been there for almost a year now. And yeah, uh, he, I, he hasn't had much of a chance to enjoy it because uh, with quarantine, uh, he actually hasn't really been allowed to leave base. Um, but he does prefer Japan to the US. And he actually prefers Japan to Hawaii. Um, so yeah, that that's that's my brother. We wanted to visit him in Japan, but um, Corona happened, so that we couldn't visit. But we're if it's ever safe again to travel, we want to visit him because I haven't seen my brother. Um, in oh whoops, sorry, I just got the notification that my battery's dying. But I haven't seen my brother in about a year, so I think I think so. Yeah, I forget. I forget the last time I saw him. So I would like to visit him. Um, oh, no, he was was he able to come down? No, he wasn't because he was still in quarantine. So yeah, I haven't seen him in a year. It's been a while, but um, yeah, I really haven't. I was trying to think. I'm like, he didn't come down for anything before Japan. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but uh, we hopefully we'll be able to visit him again. How long have you been on Book Talk? since before book talk existed uh yeah i was on book talk since before the hashtag book talk was really a thing uh back when the only person who used it was kathy ellen davis because she's the one who coined it as far as i'm concerned um as far as i'm aware of uh but yeah i was on book talk since december of 2019. uh there was only like a handful of other people there uh the ones about books was on there kathy ellen davis 24-hour library sarah rosh and penguin team uh, but there wasn't really a lot of other people, but that was when I posted my first video. So, a year and two months, I think. My first video blew up in March of 2020, though, so I really consider that the real start. Uh, how many hours do you read per day? It depends. It can be as low as zero or as high as five hours. Um, it really varies. All right, let's see. How many siblings do you have? <laughs> that's a question. You'd think that's an easy question, right? No. Two, technically. So, my default answer to that would be I have one sibling, but I don't. 
Um, I have two siblings. I did not realize I had two siblings until June of 2019. So, story time. Uh, my brother, uh, I was raised with my brother, Johnny. Um, and so me and him grew up together. Uh, and so I only had one sibling. Uh, my brother was older than me by three years, and that was it. I, I was the youngest of two. Uh, then, then, one day, one day in June 2019, I had therapy. Um, and we were going in person to see my therapist, which was rare. I did virtual even back then. Uh, so I was like, huh, okay. Um, and so we went to see the therapist. My parents were like, oh, we want to come too. We want to talk with you and the therapist for a minute. And my immediate thought was, oh God, what am I doing wrong? I was like, oh God, I'm going to be called out in front of my therapist. <laughs> I don't know why, but I was like, this is it. This is like, uh, everyone hates me. Uh, so I was in panic mode. Um, we go and meet with the therapist and my therapist meets with me first. We're just talking about things. And she could tell I was nervous about um, my parents wanting to talk. And she's like, oh, don't worry. They're, this is actually something they're nervous to tell you about. And I'm like, what? So my parents came in. And they told me I have a sister. And I was like, what? Uh, and basically, uh, they explained that before I was born, uh, before my brother was born, uh, they had a daughter, uh, Amy. Her, they didn't name her. Uh, her. They put her up for adoption uh, immediately, right after she was born. Um, and she was adopted. Uh, and her adopted family named her Amy. Um, but it was a closed adoption, so they could have no contact with her. Uh, so 10 years later, uh, they had my brother, then they had me, uh, and they did not tell us that we had a sister, um, because there was no way of contacting her or trying to find her. So they thought it would just cause more problems. And, you know, at that time there was no like DNA testing was none of that really was popular or existed. So they just thought it would be easier not to tell us. So they didn't tell us until November of 2018 when Amy uh, on her own was looking for medical uh, history. So she did 23andMe and she was connected with a uh, distant cousin of ours who said, oh, all Amy knew was um, that uh, her mom was from Long Island, uh, her birth mom, which is my mom, we're full siblings. Um, and so she was like, okay. And she found these distant cousins who were like, oh, Long Island. And um, she was like, okay, here's someone we know uh, who lives in Long Island. She directed her to my mom. Uh, she, Amy then found my mom through Facebook. They started talking. Um, and so, yeah. And then my parents spent from November 2018 to like January 2019 getting to know her and making sure it was actually her uh, and also helping her because she was dealing with health issues. Uh, and then at that point, I got back into my school semester and they went to my therapist and they were like, how do we tell her? And my therapist was like, don't you dare tell her during the school semester. This is not something she can deal with then. Uh, so then my parents flew down to Hawaii and told my brother. Uh, and I'm a little bitter about that. And then they waited until June and they told me. Um, so basically, long story short, I do have a full older sister who is 13 years older than me. Um, yeah, 13 years. I had to track doing math. Um, and I never knew about her until I was 21 years old. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bitter about that. Yeah, you know, I don't hold a grudge. Uh, but yeah, I... I didn't know about her until I was 21 years old. My parents sold me in that therapy session. And I was totally cool with it, I would like to point out. I was just like, oh, this, I was really excited. I mean, who wouldn't be excited? Uh, I always wanted a sister growing up. Like, really always wanted a sister. I was jealous of my friends. Uh, I'm learning from these lives. <laughs> All I'm learning from these lives is you're such an Aquarius. Why? What What about that screams Aquarius? But so I, anyways, back to the sister story. I thought that was really cool. Um, and yeah, um, that was, uh, 
that was that. So my parents let me uh, then text her. Uh, they gave me her number because uh, she wanted to meet me too because she was told about me uh, as my parents were talking about her. And so then we started texting and she lived in Massachusetts. So then we were able to FaceTime later that week. Uh, and then a couple months later, um, she stayed with us for a week and I got to meet her in person. And that was really fun. Uh, and then she ended up moving in with us. Um, how many months later? I think like Three months after that, she ended up moving in with us, which was so cool because uh, she was just in the room right across from mine, the room right behind this wall. Uh, so it was really fun. And yeah, we're super close and I love her so much. She's the best. Uh, so we, I have known her for a year and a half now, um, but we are so similar. It's scary. Uh, I would love to see someone studying nature versus nurture look at the two of us because it's terrifying how similar we are um and yeah that is uh that's the story of my sister and i and that's how many siblings i have uh so my brother has been stationed away though for all of this so he actually hasn't really been given a lot of time to get to know her so he's only seen her the few times he's come home for like a, a couple weeks each um so he doesn't really know her as well as i do um but yeah that's that's uh the story i do have uh two siblings technically so now my brother who was the oldest is now the middle child and apparently his reaction to finding out was to tell her uh that he is still the oldest doesn't matter what she says uh which is fine by her because uh her so her adopted family, uh, she has a brother um, who he was adopted from another family. So she has an adopted brother and he's older. So she was the youngest there. So she doesn't mind being a younger sibling uh, in, in our petting order. Um, so, yeah, but that is uh, my story with me and Amy. And uh, Amy's the best. Um, finale is blowing my mind. I can't have to feel. Uh, who's your favorite character in the Harry Potter user? universe that isn't uh the golden trio probably luna uh a math opinion you claim to be bad about what you're majoring in it's true uh i was gonna adopt a sibling i would die of happiness it was so cool i was so excited but also i will tell you it is so weird it is so like you don't know how much of you like like, okay, so it's like a fundamental truth of who you are, kind of. It's something you take for granted. The truth that you have one sibling or no siblings or three siblings, whatever. That's just a fundamental truth of who you are. It becomes second nature for you. People will always ask, how many siblings do you have? Ever since growing up, like in school, that was always like a default thought of like, how many siblings do you have? And you say, oh, I have one. And then turns out, you know, you have another sibling. And that's a surprise. Um, and so it takes a lot to retrain yourself with that in my own thinking. I remember during that first week, um, wait, how's that worked? Is she blood related? She is fully blood related. So she is my parents' daughter uh, who was just born before I was, but my parents couldn't keep her and they had to put her up for adoption. So I never knew about her. So she is my full sister. Uh, if you saw us in a room together, you would tell. Um, so yeah, she still has the, her adopted family who is, we just call her family. So she still has her family, which has her mom, uh, her brother and her dad, who she doesn't really talk to anymore. Um, so they're technically her adopted family, but they're just her family. We're her birth family. Um, so yeah, I just really taste life. It'd be a great lifetime movie. Oh my God. With a cousin dating a princess too. It's a lot. Uh, I don't know if they're still dating. Literally sounds like you have a match. So imagine my surprise when one of my favorite newer authors announces that uh, she wrote a book. That's literally what I went through. Uh, I actually have spoken to her about this. We've, we've talked about this before. She finds it so funny. Um, but yeah, I will say you have a match gets so many of the emotions right that you're going through because it is like oh my gosh that first week when after I first found out her it was an emotional whirlwind. I was like sitting in my room just like trying to wrap my mind around that. Um, it was so shocking, uh, so like strange, and then like. So like, there's the first layer of just oh god I have a sister that's so cool this person I need to meet. Then there's like a my whole life was a lie everything, that one fundamental truth about myself was a lie. I did not, that's wrong. 
this one thing, this is an arbitrary thing, something you don't think that much about, but you don't realize how much you base yourself on those things, how important those things are to like who you are. So I was like, that fundamental aspect of myself is a lie. And then it came to the question, like, if that's a lie, what else is a lie? What's real? <laughs> it was a whole emotional roller coaster. Uh, oh, and then <laughs> uh, how do your parents keep that from you and your brother? They just never spoke about it. It was something that was really sad for them. They did not want to give Amy up. Uh, they just couldn't keep her. This It was not an easy choice for them. So it was something that was very sad for them. Um, and I realized that now. And so funny story, Amy's birthday is the day after mine. Uh, so it then made me realize and be like, that's why we never really celebrated my birthday. Because it must have been so hard for them to celebrate one daughter when the other daughter they never got to know is also having her birthday and they're not there to celebrate that with her. So like, it was so hard for them. I can't imagine, I don't know how they did it, but it does explain a lot of stuff looking back. Like my brother got a month long birthday celebration where uh, relatives from all around the world would come and we would have a huge party and I would get a small gathering of my family and our, our neighbors, <laughs> maybe, maybe. That was only when I insisted. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> so that now made sense. I just thought that I was unloved. <laughs> I just thought that I was the problem here, but now I realize I wasn't. Um, so that was nice to know, but it is like, it did become a point where when it, there was like a point after I found out where I'm just like, they lied to, I was, I did go through a point of like anger of like, they lied to me about this. How dare they? Like this, they didn't have the right to choose that for me, but they kind of did because it was also a truth of the, of theirs. So they, they did have the right to, but like, there was a point in my life where I was like, well, of that first week where I was so angry, distinctly, I remember, um, <laughs> My mom got mad at me for not doing my chores <laughs> that first day. That first day after we found out, she yelled at me the next morning because I didn't do my chores. <laughs> and I just remember standing at the top of the stairs, just looking at her and I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Like, You're mad at me because I didn't empty the dishes? You lied about something that was... You lied about me having a sibling my entire life. You lied to me for 21 years. And you're upset I didn't do the dishes? <laughs> I was like, uh, so yeah, I, I, I got a little annoyed. I would say that, but like, I also don't, I'm not angry a lot. I, I'm not good at anger. So I was angry for like a second until I just started crying. <laughs> and I was just, <laughs> I was angry and I was like, you know, indignant. Just like, how dare you for like half a second. And then I just started crying. I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm just processing and I completely forgot. And then I immediately went to feeling guilty because that's my default emotion. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that that's the story with my sister. Um, <laughs> uh, they don't care about me. That was my default thought. To be honest, it's still default thought a lot of the time. You know, the Lifetime movie I'm watching is now so bad. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, your life is probably a YA novel. Where's the enemy to lovers? I'm waiting for it. I'm bitter. I feel robbed. Um, so yeah. Um, have you read the Fallen Kingdom series? I have not, but I really want to. Um, so that is, uh, that's the story with that. Um, <laughs> What happened to YA Books account? Uh, well, Morgan's still posting. She's at Sit Suppose. Uh, so you can follow her there. And he's you're in trouble saying that. They really gave me the best get out of jail free card with that. Like anytime they're mad at me. Oh, if I ever, if I ever lie to them about anything, if they call me out for it, if they ever call me out for lying, <laughs> they can't. They have to know they can't because they haven't done it. They have to know they can't. Uh, you have no enemies, just force one of your enemies to fall in love. You know, I, I need to make more enemies. Um, so yeah, hi, Dee Dee. Um, so yeah, I can get really angry, but normally it ends me crying to some emotional wreck. Yeah, same. My problem is I feel bad for showing emotion. Yes, me too. I think we all need therapy, guys. Let's have a group therapy session. Uh, most parents lie, but that's the ultimate lie. Yeah, that, that's like a major one. That's like a, hey, why? Um, they could have told me that at a young age and then just made that like my normal thing. But also it was hard for them. And there's like no blueprint to what's the right way of doing this. Uh, what are we doing? <laughs> 
what are we doing? We're just talking. Uh, what are you reading at the moment? I am reading uh, Waiting for a Start Like You and um, Down Comes the Night. I had to think. Uh, oh, my mom's setting up a therapist. I don't know how I feel about it. Therapists are great. Think of it as an exciting chance where you get to vent to someone who's paid to listen to you. Like, that's incredible. Someone You get to say whatever you want. They're paid to listen to you. Uh, maybe that's why I need uh, it's trust me, it's incredible. Uh, I have therapy tomorrow. I'm excited. Uh, group therapy session one. Uh, this is basically group therapy. Uh, so yeah. What do you think about Mark Twain? Not a fan, to be honest. Um, not gonna lie. Do you have any young adult book recommendations? Hell yeah. You have a match by Emma Lord. If you like my sister's story, read that. Um, also, we're gonna pick different genres. Illuminated by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Um, and then for a fantasy rock, we're gonna go with Bone Crier's uh, Dawn, Bone Cryer's Moon is the first one. Bone Cryer's Moon by Catherine Purdy. And then Historical, we're going to go Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Monastalco. And, um, what, what's another one? Um, what are other genres? Uh, oh, 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 uh, Paranormal, Go Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Um, so yes. Do we have sister reveal? If she ever wants to, uh, be in a video, uh, I, I, yeah, she has talked about, she has considered being a live stream. She actually wanted to be in a live stream once, but uh, she had to move down to Florida to take care of her mom. Uh, 30 people were building one therapist, three sessions. There we go. Um, <laughs> what do you think about comic books? I wanted into them more. Um, so yeah, uh, honestly, at some point I would love to look up my mother and give me dream life, but you also gave me trauma. Yeah. Uh, you don't recommend the first version of both, do you? I think I remember you saying don't. Yeah, I don't. They handle a scene really poorly. Um, all right. Okay, so the spreadsheet is officially closed uh, a while ago. Um, she's really sweet. My sister's the best. I love her. Um, what do you think about the Peanuts comic strip? I, you know, never really, never really read it that much, I have to admit. Um, I've been playing with my therapist for the first seven years. I'm very excited. I'm excited for you. That's so exciting. That, that's so fun. Uh, today's my birthday. Oh my gosh, happy birthday. That's incredible. Happy birthday. I hope you have a great day. That's exciting. Uh, wait, wait, was she uh, the same sister in the uh, oh, hamster ball video? We have a glimpse for her. She actually was. That was my mom in that video. Because uh, my mom was my mom was the one standing in that video. My sister was watching from the sidelines. Uh, I don't think she actually got in it. Uh, I don't think so. But my mom was in that. My dad, I think, for a second, too. Um, but I'm going to get my sister in a video one day. One day. Um, that's a mission. Um, hi, sweet cupcake. J if J.K. Rowling were to write another Harry Potter book, would you read it? Probably not. No, I might pirate it. I don't pirate books, but I would for that. I picture Zoya looking like you. Oh, you? Oh, that's so nice. I love my sister so pretty much. Me too. Sisters are great. Uh, 10 out of 10 would recommend. My copy, we, uh, we held the flame came and say, oh my gosh, yes. I'm so happy for you. Uh, can't wait for the sister reveal. It's gonna happen. All right, it's almost time to end the stream. So at the end of every stream, we read the first page of a book. So uh, we have to pick which first page we want to read today. Um, uh, I was trying to think, we had talked about doing, um, did we do Addie LaRue? We had talked about doing Addie LaRue. I can't remember if we actually did it. Um, so we could do Addie LaRue. Uh, what do you think of Game of Thrones? I actually DNF'd it. I feel bad. Yeah, it's so good. Wicked Saints. We could do Wicked Saints. Uh, we could do Wicked Saints if you guys want. I love Wicked Saints. Uh, I do love Wicked Saints. I think we did Addie LaRue. I think we did it. Um, so yeah, uh, I have three brothers and if you have a doctor sister. They're all... It's been the theme of the stream. Uh, which one is? Oh, you have a match. We did you have a match. Uh, we did it a couple of, um, we did just a few streams ago, so I feel bad doing it now, even though it's the theme of the stream. I feel like, uh, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's been too soon. I wasn't, I wasn't here for Addy and I just bought it for Arms and Noble. Okay, well, I think, I think we may do, uh, one day I'm get you do Illuminae. Okay, we'll do Illuminae maybe next. Okay, we'll do, okay, we're gonna do Wicked Saints. We're gonna do Wicked Saints today. Uh, then we're going to do Illuminae, maybe next time. We're doing a stream like this on Tuesday, so maybe on Tuesday. And then, uh, we, we need to put some more gap between times we do You Have a Match. And I, I remember the You Have a Match one wasn't even that, like, 
but it wasn't that thrilling of a first page. Uh, so we're going to do Wicked Saints today. So let me grab my copy of Wicked Saints. Now, if you guys are new to the streams, I'll just let you know the next stream that will be a Q&A like this one. Oh, I'm knocking stuff over. Next Q&A will be Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. What's my hair doing? Who cares? Uh, so next Q&A will be Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But if you want to do a read with me where we just sit and read, it'll be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Will you do Sorcery of Thorns? We'll add that to the list do next time. Uh, well, next time we're going to do Illuminate, then after that, Sorcery of Thorns. Uh, I would also like to point out, like, it's signed. That's cool. Uh, signed and personalized. It says question everything. Uh, so, yeah. I just remember liking the first line of this book. So, um, yeah. And also, um, we if it ends mid-sentence, we finish the sentence, usually the paragraph. And now, if you guys want to talk for a little bit longer, we'll be over on the Discord, which is linked in my bio. And we're going to be on the voice chat hanging out for like a half hour longer after this. So if you want to join us, you can head over there right after uh, the stream ends. So we'll be over there right after this. Um, so yeah, check out the Discord, linked in the bio. Otherwise, let's read. All right. So this is the first page of Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. This is a Gothic fantasy, YA fantasy. It follows a cleric who can speak to the gods, uh, who her kingdom is in a holy war with another kingdom. And it's about her and a heretic blood mage from the enemy kingdom who must team up to kill the enemy king. Uh, so this is the first page. So this is from Nadezhda Lapteva's point of view. And it starts with a quotation. Death, magic, and winter. A bitter cycle that Marzenia spins with, cri with crimson threads around pale fingers. She is constant. She's unrelenting. She is eternal. She can grant any spell to those she has blessed, but her reach is the fabric of magic itself. From the Code of the Divine, 218. The common echo of holy chants filtered down from the sanctuary and into the cellars. It was, a, it was late afternoon, just before Vespers, a time where psalms to the gods were given up in an effortless chorus. The Dej de Lapteva glared up at the mountains of potatoes threatening to avalanche down over the table. She twisted her knife hard against the one in her hand, narrowly missing skin as she curled the peel into a spiral. A cleric's duty is important, Nadezhda, she muttered, mimicking the dour tone of the monastery's abbot. You could change the tide of the war, Nadezhda. Now go wither in the cellars for the rest of your life, Nadezhda. The table was covered in potato peel spirals. She hadn't anticipated losing her entire day to remedial labor, yet here she was. And that is the first page of Wicked Saints. It's kind of short since there was the quotation. Um, so, yeah, that's Wicked Saints. Uh, I love this book. It's really fun. It's like there's like action and stuff, but like it's more like character driven, kind of slow at times. So be warned. But I love it so much. It's so worth it. And the final book comes out, um, I believe, on March 30th. No, April sets. April sets it comes out. So we're very close, and I'm very excited, and I'm very scared. Uh, now, if you guys want to hang out for a little bit longer, we will be over on the Discord, which is linked in my bio. And if you're on YouTube, it's actually a uh, link down below. Uh, YouTube camera's there, but it's actually linked down below. Um, so yeah. Uh, you have a career in audiobooks. Your voice is really soothing. Thank you. Someone once commented on a video that my voice made them uncomfortable and that I, I've been living with that for a while. So that made me feel a little better. Uh, someone also said that when I'm excited, I sound like the gingerbread man from Shrek and I'm still coping with that one. Um, do you think Crescent City would be too hard to read for someone going into fantasy? I haven't read it myself, so I'm not sure, but I have heard that it's a little bit slow at first. Okay, we have to fix that. It's a little slow at first, so it might be tough. Oh, your voice is beautiful. Love your voice. I love you guys. Oh, hey, let's see. Uh, do Shadow and Bone. Uh, what, do the first page? We can do that eventually. Uh, if there's a character from book series that you would love to travel in different bookish universe, you would pick and why? I would pick Malakiosh from Wicked Saints traveling into the Shadow and Bone universe. I want to see him in the Darkland interact. Two edgelords trying to see who's cooler. Uh, that really, it would just be so... No, honestly, Malakiosh would just get anxious and uh, give up. Uh, so yeah, what are your thoughts on Zoya? Sorry if I already uh, responded, I had to leave. No worries, I love Zoya so much. She's just an amazing character. What do you think of Lord of the Rings? I want to read it, but I also don't. I don't know. I'm kind of intimidated by it. Your voice is so good. Just make lesbian. <laughs> Thank you. That's so sweet. Thank you. Oh, have you ever read Magician by Raymond Price? I just started today. It's amazing. Ooh, should I read it? I, I haven't read it. 
that, that's the answer to the question. I haven't read it, but maybe I should. All right, we, we gotta head out and over to the Discord. So if you wanna join the Discord, the link is in my bio. Um, otherwise, I will see you Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for another Q&A, or I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time for a read with me. Uh, I'll be reading Down Comes the Night, which has major Wicked Saints vibes. Just saying. All right, good night, guys. Thank you for spending this time with me, and I will see you hopefully tomorrow, otherwise Tuesday. Who knows? Or maybe on the Discord. Bye, guys. All right, and YouTube, you now get a second goodbye. Good night, YouTube. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me today. And I will see you, I won't be on YouTube until next Sunday. So I'll see you Sunday. Bye.